Okay, so I said we should have recorded that and I didn't. Maybe you can recall what I said because I've forgotten already. Oh, I'm talking about some adventures in Africa. Baby. Africa. <laughs> you arrived and the baby had a temperature of 105. Now Eileen had taken a temperature of 105. So you bound out of the upstairs apartment and there was a man being carried up the stairs? Yeah, in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. So you I leapt over the top you leapt them. over the top of them, landed downstairs and raced into the bar calling out for a doctor as all the <laughs> dust was coming from the ceiling of the bar because of the landing. <laughs> Everyone's drink right in dust. <laughs> I need a doctor. Baby's got a fever. I need a doctor. So the doctor arrives some time later and you say to him, Doctor, what took you so long? He says, Sir, if the baby had a temperature of 105 degrees, she would be dead. Did your wife happen to wash the thermometer in hot water before taking her temperature? Which of course she had. <laughs> and that was also where the car Jaguar landed on top of your chest. You're underneath the car and you're calling out and Eileen wanders out and you okay? Put the jack under the car as you're holding the car up off your chest. Finally she does and these are just part of your adventures in the life of the Christ and you just said that you didn't go mad like others. That's what happens to people. Go to churches, they go to all kinds of places because of madness setting in. Sickness, illness, insanity. Zionism. Unjust laws, Zionism. Yes, degradation of culture and morals and death. What did John War. Strugnall say about Judaism? Oh, it's a pathetic little religion that should have been wiped out 2,000 years ago. No. That's the front page of the uh, Israeli newspaper. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Well, then they had the demon rising. Hmm. Like in the Seven Day War when they got the Dead Sea Scrolls. They said they'd have to now retranslate them. Mm. It would take 40 years. It took them 40 years. So they wiped Strugnall and mm. Allegro and a Catholic priest. Mm. And another team of experts, all working out of Cambridge somewhere, saying it is a filthy little religion that should have been wiped out 2,000 years ago. Mm. They had to go. Mm. Talking about saying stuff like that. That's why I was rather angry when I was a little boy, and I was only two, four, two, four days old, you know? Mm. Go into a rage. Jesus, what an effing. <laughs> <laughs> in time, says Mary. Jesus, Jesus, come. Ah, thinking to yourself as you're examining what's happening on the top of the step. Thinking, bloody tired. <laughs> Just walked all that way in a hot and dusty desert. 222 miles, is it, or was that the round trip? <laughs> from Alexandria and she's yelling at me to come. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, okay. She's driving off. Looking up at her. Without looking down. Your mother says to you, the Jews will kill us if they find out that we are Essenes. Okay, I can keep a secret as you turn around. Go back. You see your father, Joseph. Bellicose. Huge mountain of a man. Do you remember his beard? Full, like a bush. His arms around the two little people. Men, Jews, under his arms. Remember 
have been interesting for them. If you've been hot and sweaty coming from... <laughs> Whoa! Okay, they looked happy enough though to see... Black help me to say it was coming. Aha! You know what it is that he's wearing. And then, the scene switches. We're now in a rather cave-like dwelling amongst the rocks. There's a door and there's a window with a rather crude-looking stick blind containing the piece of fabric that's trying to escape with the wind. And once again, Mary and Joseph dressed in black this time. Your mother warns you. Do not follow her. We go to the priest. Stay inside. You think to yourself, not on your life. As they stealthily make their way in the dark of night, it was a new moon, pressed against the walls of the houses lining the streets. They take a sharp right, disappear into the night, and you know this because while watching them go. Little did you know, or perhaps you did have an inkling that you were the subject well, of the meeting that night. Mm -hmm. The sacrificial lamb, the crucifixion you would have to face in another 27 years. That's why I go about my father's business. Scene change. We're back in the schoolyard. Yes. Hmm. You let the boys live. They separate. Look at you in astonishment. Thinking to themselves, what the hell is he on about? What is an essay? And on the way home that afternoon, you're just pondering things of the universe, things that occupy a lad who's just two, four, two, four days old. You look up, you say, well, God, you must have left your signature somewhere in your creation. I'll make a deal with you if you tell me. I'll tell the world. I said, if you lie. If you like. You tell me, and I'll tell the world. Little did he know. He was talking to himself. A small boy, born into the pit of hell. Rust child out of the new. Identifying the devil himself. You don't have to think about it. Take any guesses. Drop a ticket into a hat and be drawn out as the lottery. It was dark. So, here we are today. Sixty-two years later. Lived. Isaiah 63, been on every continent on the earth, have seen every abomination, every ill treatment, the despair, the hunger, the hopelessness of the meek set upon by the beast. who in their heart say, there is no God. Oh, what a life work. <laughs> Thumbs up in an afternoon before we go for that bike ride. <laughs> Oh. <sighs>
Yeah, what are we going to call that one? Got to go for a bike ride. <laughs>